Hey guys, Hunter Man Gaming here, bringing you a Battlefield video this morning. Today is Friday, June 6th. Hope everyone had a happy 4th of July. If you celebrate that, if not, that's okay too. Hope you had a great day. Today we're going to go over, um, this is going to be like a Battlefield 5 speculation video today. Over like what kind of, what guns I think will be in the game, and we're also going to go over the June patch, what and what guns that added in. So first up, we're going to start with the patch. So with the patch, we had the Annihilator Storm Thompson submachine gun, which looks just like the trench, only um, this one's going to boast um, better overall stats in regards to accuracy and control than the trench, which is better at hip fire. Um, also, the patch brought the Frommerstop auto pistol, or Glock 18, World War One. If you're on that joke, and um, and the uh, sawed-off shotgun to the assault class, and also brought a new melee weapon. I think it's new. I don't know. I don't really use melee weapons that often. Uh, the sickle, which you have to get five kills in a round with the Welsh blade to unlock. And then skipping over here, we have the the Burton LMR trench and the Burton LMR uh, optical. Uh, these guns were barely, I'm not sure how often they were used, they were meant for anti-air. The two magazines can be swapped in between. Uh, as you can see, the right magazine has been pushed down, meaning that magazine is engaged, and the shells are ejected in front of the trigger guard under those magazines. Now you can pull one magazine out halfway and slap the other one down, which is how you do it in this game. In this game, you um, you pull the right one out. The, the right magazine is regular bullets. The left magazine is incendiary rounds used for uh, aircraft. aircraft. Deals increased damage against aircraft with less damage dealt against infantry. And also we have the, uh, the PO-8 artillery, the Piper... M1893, the M1911 Extended, the MLE Extended, and the C93 Suppressed Carbine. That was all brought over from the Tanker and Pilot class. In addition, we have the 1911 Suppressed. I've got that nice care package skin on there from Road to Battlefield 5. And uh, the Medics got the Bolt Action Rifle special thing, uh, Fire Mode change to where it can actually go from a semi-auto rifle to a standard bolt action rifle. Um, the animation is very quick. You do something with the end of the rifle, which probably to, um, since, since uh, semi-automatic weapons re require, excuse me, um, gas operation, especially in the early times, and um, to, so I'm guessing you flip something at the muzzle to allow all the gas to propel the round forward, henceforth dealing more damage, but requiring you to pull the bolt back every time you fire a shot. So, very cool, but um, the 1903, however, did not get its infantry mode. It did not get an infantry variant, and it did not get a um, alternate fire for the to allow for the 30 ox six bolt action rounds, it's been tested in CTE, but unfortunately it hasn't made it. And the and the June patch was the very last patch, so fortunately no 1903 bolt action. Anyway, on to for the rest of the video, we're gonna go over um, what guns I th I feel will go over. Obviously, we the M 1911 for well for the Americans the M 1911 will most definitely come over. Um. It's, I mean, it's the pinnacle of American engineering in regards to pistols, and, uh, I mean, officers had it, I mean, tankers had it, pilots had it, I mean, you, you can find, you, you can generally find one, that's how easy they are to find, and it was the standard issue, uh, army pistol of the, Uni pistol of the United States until the Beretta 9mm replaced it, I think, the 80s and 90s. Uh, even then, like, uh, Special Forces units like the Navy SEALs, they, they like to carry these around still. Alright, next up we have the PO-8 pistol, um, or Luger. Um, this will definitely be coming over. So far in-game we've seen the um, the Walter P-38, 
but this is the, the P38 was supposed to um, replace the uh, 9mm Luger and um, it's act and the P38 was also in the first battlefield battlefield 1942 as the Axis sidearm and um, I think this pistol will also make it this is the uh, this is one of the DLC pistols the revolver mark six yeah uh, or the Webley. Um, it was used by British officers uh, well into World War II. Very, I mean, the odds of this pistol making it in are very high. It's been seen in a lot of other World War II games like Call of Duty 2, um, like the original one that came out uh, in 2006, I believe. Um, There's a mission on the British where you can pick this weapon up off a table where you spawned in. And um, other game World War II games have um, have featured this weapon before so um, that really wraps it up for this um, really the rest of these pistols are World War one specific they're not very special um, that's about it there so for these guns really none of these are gonna make it in there I mean the trench gun probably because trench gun was used way into like Korea actually even in Viet even in uh, yeah Vietnam um, it's good. It's a sweeper. It's good for clearing out tight quarters, trenches, etc., etc. And um, but I wanted to pay attention to the 1919 Thompson. This is going to be closer to the variant we're going to see in Call of Duty. Or not Call of Duty. I am. I apologize. This is heresy. In Battlefield 5, we're going to see this this beauty. Um, but it's going to have an extended stock. We've seen it in the game. For this variant to the gameplay trailer variant. Um, it's just going to feature. The smooth, um, for uh, we've seen the foregrip like we've got here, the vertical foregrip, and the uh, the smooth uh, grip. And uh, but we're also gonna have stock. Now I didn't see any drums. We might I don't know if we'll be able to go full Chicago typewriter or not, but we'll see. And um, really that wraps it up. I mean, sawed-off shotgun might make it, but I really I don't think so. And um, really none of the melee melee weapons are gonna go. Um, I don't see any of uh, these rifles for the medic class coming over. Um, as for um, the support class, we can see uh, we're going to have the BAR. The BAR is used in World War One, World War Two, Korea, uh, maybe some parts of uh, Vietnam, like early. Like when I say Vietnam, I mean like. Uh, South Vietnam got a lot of American weapons, especially uh, early on in their war. So um, we're probably going to, this is probably what we're going to see. Let's see, where is it? There it is. All right, this is the pre-order BAR. Uh, it features, th this is an upgrade over the um, the original BAR that we see um, here. I'm just going to select BAR Storm. So... Um, changes between the the 1918 original BAR to the BAR 1918A2. Um, this one features two select fire modes, single fire and full auto, as you can see indicated by full auto there, or by the fire mode area there. And um, that's how it was used. But then in World War II, the, the A2 model got upgraded. It got the bipod here on the end. And, uh, which I'm assuming will be a feature in Battlefield 5. But, as you can see, you only have full auto. That's not the case. You have two fire, two types of full auto. You have slow auto and fast auto. And uh, slow auto is typically used in like longer range engagements. It allowed for like more like uh, precise shooting because you weren't firing as fast. Whereas fast auto is generally used in close quarters combat, and even since the BAR is a very long weapon, uh, you're looking about the size of like a little longer than a standard hunting rifle that you would use now. Um, and it was it was heavy. It kicked a lot. It fired a 30 ox six caliber, same as the uh, M1 Grand, which we will definitely see in Battlefield 5, and uh, the uh, 1903 bolt action. All right, so over here, here we're probably not gonna we're gonna see the end of the Russian 1895 rifles. 
Um, but we are, however, going to see not quite this rifle, the uh, G98 or Gefair 98 infantry. Um, we've already seen it in uh, pre-alpha and alpha gameplay as the uh, Car 98K. In World War II, the Germans cut these uh, rifles down shorter to allow for better mobility during urban combat. They still allowed for the bayonet, but they were just shorter overall, and the straight bolt was replaced with a flush bolt. That way, it didn't get snagged on clothing. Um, this was the main uh, German rifle well until the 1950s, I believe. Um, even though the German army was a mere shadow of what it used to be after World War II, they still had a lot of these rifles. And uh, next up we have the uh, SMLE, which will probably be called the Leonfield. Um, the, this rifle will also be cut down. It'll probably be, probably be more um, closer to this. Like the, but it's going to feature a little barrel extension on the end and not the little snub nose barrel, as I like to call it. And uh, again, this same thing as with the uh, Gefair 98. There's a very, um, uh, it's going to be very, uh, it's short, it'll allow for better mobility during an urban combat, and it's just a lot easier to carry. And um, let's go down here. All right, we're going to go to the 1903. The 1903 does not change from World War One to World War II. Um, the Peterson device idea kind of got abandoned, and there's only like 1,500 of them made, I think. Anyway, um... So we're just going to have like the standard bolt action. Now, this rifle was not really handed out as a main infantry rifle uh, when the U.S. got involved with World War II. I mean, people had them because that's what we had up till then. But then, but a lot of them were replaced with the uh, the M1 Grand, which eight round magazine has a little pinger clip, as I like to call it, and still chambered in a 30 6 caliber. But um, this rifle was used as a sniper rifle all through World War II, and um, it, it was known for its accuracy, and, and as you can see, and um, if you've seen Saving Private Ryan, you saw Private Jackson, so he got blasted out of the uh, church tower, did a lot of work with this rifle. And um, we're not we're going to see the, India, the legendary martini, unfortunately. A uh, little bell will be gone, but we will have this little guy. This is the pre-order Mosin Nagant M38 carbine. The M91 was made in 1891, and this one was um, put into production on uh, in 1938 as the M38. The 38 stands for the year it went into production and service. Now the Russians cut it down just like every other rifle, uh, allow for better urban combat and. Um, while it will hurt muzzle velocity and damage a little bit, it's I've used it in game. It's pretty good, just like the regular M98. But um, this I really like that front sight more. The front sight got at had that ring added to it to allow for um, to protect the the blade the uh, little blade end. That way, if it got hit on something, it didn't uh, dent it or make it blunt. All right, so the Ross, the Car the Carcano, we might see, actually. The Carcano was the main uh, Italian service rifle for a very long time. We're probably going to see one longer than this, if I had to guess. Um, and, like, the wooden four, four stock will probably be extended to the barrel, if I had down the a whole length of the barrel, unlike you see here. And um, I doubt we'll have the... Um, like the long internal stripper clip like we put in it right now. Now, um, I may be wrong. I don't know. I don't know a lot about the Carcano. I know it was made by... Um, I, it's All I know is it's not the Italian service rifle. And um, it stayed into, from World War One into World War Two, And uh, Mussolini actually made a name for himself as a sharpshooter with this rifle in World War One. Okay... And then the 1917 infields will be gone. The Ross will be gone. Arasaka. So this was the Japanese uh, standard issue rifle for a long time. Um, World War One, World War Two. Um, it was um, actually had that cool skin on it. And um, anyway, uh, 
we will probably see Japanese uh, expansions and maps. So this rifle will most likely come back, if I had to guess. And um, we actually, actually, in the Road to Battlefield 5, we still have um, another... Well, I think it starts... Should be starting soon, but then the next part of the uh, Stage 2, which will show us the next gun that'll be coming into Battlefield 5. Now, real quick, I almost forgot. I forgot about this gun, the uh, Lewis. Now... The way I know it's coming back is the blood tub. If it's got the blood tub skin, it's coming into Battlefield 5. So after Dunkirk, the the uh, British Army left a good majority of their equipment and weapons and ammunition. And if, basically, if it wasn't a, on you, you left it. Any excess gear was dropped when the uh, when the British Expeditionary Force um, fleed at Dunkirk oh, to get back across. The English Channel back to England. Uh, it's called Operation Dynamo. Um, several thousand uh, British troops were saved, and the French were left to defend, try to defend themselves against the German war machine. Anyway, so the Lewis gun stepped out of retirement because the Bryn gun was uh, had replaced that had replaced the Lewis gun, Bryn gun we've seen in game, in uh, alpha and pre-alpha stuff. Um, the Lewis gun was brought back out of retirement as a a uh, temporary uh, replacement because the Lew there's a high demand for light machine guns. So since they couldn't, ha they didn't have enough Brins, they needed to bring. They brought out like several thousand Lewis guns that they had left in storage, and uh, the Lewis gun kept going until they were eventually replaced again by the Bren gun. Still a very great gun. It still kept that 47 round um, top top loading drum magazine very solid gun I believe I'm gonna go through this one more time make sure I covered everything yep we're good alright guys well thank you for watching I hope you all enjoyed I'm going to go I'm gonna make a video on the um, the Burton uh, light machine rifle later um, it'll probably be out either tomorrow because I neglected to post a video on Monday and Wednesday. Wednesday I was a holiday, so I'm not going to worry about that. And um, so I'll probably get the, the Burton LMR video posted on Saturday. And um, there will be a um, Destiny 2 live stream later today, so be sure to tune in for that. Um, we'll probably start around 8.30 or 9 o'clock Eastern Time. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you.